Welcome back to the second hour of our program. On the line with us, our good buddy, J Greg Pallas, the investigative journalist, author, and filmmaker. His latest is Vigilante, Georgia's vote suppression. Vigilantemovie.com is the website. It's airing free through this weekend, thanks to uh, George DiCaprio, our mutual friend. Uh, GregPallas.com or Vigilantemovie.com are the websites. And uh, Greg, I'm, I'm hearing on the media, I'm, you know, I, I, I caught it on the news, uh, you know, actually from multiple sources that uh, the Georgia turnout was spectacular. The election was great. There were, it went off without a hitch. Brad Raffsenberger should be congratulated. And, uh, you know, isn't it great that Raphael Warnock won, by the way? Uh, what's, what's, what, what say you, Well, sir? everything's fine. So see you later. No, yeah. um, okay. This is completely from Brian Kemp. And Republican, his dog's body, Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger's press release. The problem is that your math-challenged journalists, and they went into journalism because they flunked math, right? I was a professor of statistics, so I did something unusual. I actually looked at the numbers. Are you ready for this, Tom? Yes, there was a record turnout, a record collapse. Both the general and the runoff fell by one million votes in the runoff when Raphael Warner ran last time, he got, there was a 4.5 million vote turnout. Now this, this one, are you talking about the, the, the general election or are you talking about the runoff? No, I'm talking about his runoff two years ago, 4.5 million votes. Okay. Now it's down to 3.5 million votes. And even those who went through, um, you know, our No Child's Behind Left Education program know that's a 1 million vote drop overwhelmingly in the black counties of Atlanta, the four black counties of Atlanta, Raphael Warnock's vote plummeted hmm. by 74,000. He wasn't picked up by uh, Walker. It was a massive attack on the voter rolls. I was just talking with Barbara Arnwine, recognized by just about everyone as the number one voting rights lawyer in America from Columbia University. She was down there. She was in tears reading this stuff that there was a record turnout. Look at the footnote. Look, they, if you read the press release, the detail says in-person turnout, which was about the same. I said a million less, but how do you lose a million votes? It was the mail-in and drop-in vote, which they made, a uh, ballot drop box vote, which they made virtually illegal. The reason why Barbara was in tears is that she, the Professor Arnwine, was down there literally carrying disabled elderly black people to the polls because they never sent them their mail-in ballots because they didn't know that for the first time under Jim Crow 2.0, or as, as uh, Brian Kemp calls it, uh, SB 202, you have to request a ballot, even though disabled people and soldiers normally get these ballots automatically. The hero of our film, Vigilante, um, Major Gamaliel Turner, because he went to court, he got his ballot, he was assigned to a military base in California, but they never sent the absentee ballot to his wife who had joined him at the military base. So this is the game that's being played. She says the real attack was on black voters and especially black elderly, black disabled, students. Uh, it was horrific, horrific. And the voting lines, you can look online, the voting wait in Atlanta was two hours in every early voting precinct. And in uh, the white rural counties, the average wait was 10 minutes. Right. If and it was raining in Georgia on election day, if you handed Barbara was also very upset. She saw mothers with children could not hand them an umbrella because that's a felony crime and she would be disbarred. She couldn't hand them a glass, a box of juice while they were waiting two hours in the rain. All she could do was go along the line and say thank you for voting. It wow. was Jim Crow at its absolute worst. And what stuns me. Okay, I expected the Wall Street Journal to say, oh, Jim Crow 2.0 never happened. They went for the, you know, they're happy to reread to you the press release. But the repeaters, not the reporters at the New York Times, and it's a guy I never heard of, maybe because of the strike at the New York Times, okay? Clearly a math challenge reporter who, who said that not only did it not, not, uh, not affect the black vote, SB 202, but in fact, it backfired so that the Democratic vote actually increased. On what calculator is he working? Yeah. I don't see how you go from four and a half million to three and a half million. Raphael Warnock in the main county of Atlanta, Fulton, 
his vote went down by 74,000. And his ex the, the only number that they quoted was that the fall off between the general and the runoff was the same as the fall off between the general uh, from 2020 to this election. The fall off was caused by SB 202. It didn't, it wasn't enacted in this month between the uh, general and the runoff. So again, you had, and the biggest problem was that they cut the runoff time from 60 days to 28 days. By the way, last time, Warnock and Ossoff uh, for their runoff registered tens of thousands, uh, at least, I think at least 100,000 voters, I have to look it up, uh, before the runoff. This time, they literally cut the runoff time so it was one day too late to register a single voter. And again, voters in the military, voters in nursing homes who automatically get their mail-in ballots were not sent their mail-in ballots. They did not get any notice. By the way, you have to ask now for your mail-in ballot to vote in this election. And so they were going to the nursing homes, getting affidavits, literally carrying disabled people to the polls. Wow. This is what was going on. It was, it was the most Jim Crow election I've seen in 22 years of reporting on this. And I, I'm horrified that you even have MSNBC having Brad Raffensperger, the uh, GOP um, henchman who crafted this Jim Crow game, on as a hero. I know. You know, because he stood up against Donald Trump. And by the way, the only, uh, Brian Kemp has now been endorsed for president by the Wall Street Journal and was given a virtual endorsement listed as the best candidate by the New York Times. You see what's going on. And I guarantee and you SB 202 is going to be the next piece of ALEC model legislation for every other you know state with a Republican legislature, if it isn't already. Well, in fact, I was just speaking just now with Congress, the latest, uh, the newest congresswoman from Dallas, Jasmine Crockett, for the Congressional Black Caucus. They're going to be sh uh, screening my film. They asked me if they could screen it for the Congressional Black Caucus. I said, fine, but how about the Congressional White Caucus? Because they came to Atlanta, not to help Warnock, but to prevent the spread of the disease of SB202, mm. this new Jim Crow law. Yeah. to Texas, which they know is, is the next state that's going to be taken down by this by this game, especially because the national press said, oh, it didn't affect black vote. In fact, the black vote increased. Yeah, they not only got really? away with it, they got praised for it. They got praised for it. Can you imagine? It's just breathtaking, Greg. It was cruel. It was not just evil. And, and when we talk about vote suppression, you have to imagine they cut the number of voting days uh, even drop boxes, um, the major uh, Gamaliel Turner, who's denied his vote under this system where you can personally challenge, anyone can challenge someone else's vote. 88 Republicans challenged 149,000 Democrats. But uh, the Democrats, I will say to their credit, refused to challenge a single voter. Bravo. Right. So how but, many of those 149,000 people who were challenged by these Republican uh, uh, vote vigilantes, the, thus the title of your movie, uh, vigilante, uh, George's voter suppression hitman. How many of those people who were challenged were not able to vote? Well, luckily, I, we don't have a final number, but most of them we were able to stop because the biggest challenge group was in, um, was in Cobb County or, and Gwinnett County. And Gwinnett voted three to two, their elections board, to simply ignore these challenges. They said it was clearly systematic, partisan, and racist. Wow. So they voted just by one single independent, nonpartisan uh, elections official said, I've seen Greg Pallas uh, evidence and we are not going to remove these voters at all. You know, let the governor remove us. The governor now has the right to remove those elections officials. He's removed 10 who haven't agreed with him, right. including Helen Butler, who's known as Mrs. Vote. She's like the number one expert on voting in Georgia. Brian Kemp yanked her under his new powers from the elections boards. Was that part of SB 2022, giving him the power yes. to, to basically the gerrymander power. the election boards? Indeed. So he, and he's used it. He used it before this election. And here's the other danger, Tom. We're talking 2024. Why do you think that the Texans were there and other delegates from the Congressional Black Caucus? You know, uh, it was not to, to you know, just uh, help people. They were calling people whose votes were denied. There was a mass challenge, by the way, on, on voter signatures, even though there's not what, any evidence that any black person forged a signature at all. 
but they were there to stop the contagion. And in 2024, under SB202, remember, Brian Kemp testified, uh, supposedly testified, that uh, when Trump called him and said, please call in your legislature, decertify the votes right. in Fulton County, in Atlanta. And, and Kemp didn't say, I wouldn't do it. He just said, I don't have the authority. That's under correct. SB202, he has the authority. So look out for 2024. And it might be Brian Kemp decertifying the the vote against himself yeah. if he's the candidate. Yeah, and, and what I'm hearing is that um, Ron DeSantis, while you know everybody's talking about him right now because he's kind of Donald Trump with a with a law degree from Yale and and can complete a you know coherent sentence and whatnot, that uh, DeSantis is just going to be considered too extreme for the GOP, and they're going to go for somebody. They don't want a Mitt Romney. They don't want somebody who's seen as Mr. Milk Toast. Brian Kemp is seen as you know Mr. Hard Ass basically. Um, yeah, but, I mean, but he's not, but he's, but he defied Trump and, and that just, you know, he turned into David, the, the giant killer really in, in the, in the, in the remnant of the GOP that's not completely in maggot land. Well, I'm worried about the Democrats who are, who are getting seduced by this guy. You had an editorial, uh, a profile, glowing, uh, suck up profile to Brian Kemp, a vicious vote suppressor, the worst. He makes Catherine Harris look like Thomas Jefferson. Um, and um, they ran this story, uh, Brian Kemp, the man who neutered Donald Trump. Right. Uh, really? He's the guy, he himself said, I support everything Trump stands for. I like Donald Trump. I don't know why he doesn't like me. And he's more vicious than Trump in many ways. Wow. You know, uh, and, um, you know, he's the guy who said, you know, who has his shotgun and ran his commercials. Uh, I got me a pickup truck to pick up illegals myself. And I just said that I'm a politically incorrect conservative. This is red meat. And yeah, yeah once he gets around the Trump hump, they've picked him for our president and they're seducing the liberals. So go to vigilantemovie.com. Let's rip the bark off this guy and tell the truth. Amen. Vigilantemovie.com. You can check it out. You can watch it free throughout the weekend. Uh, thanks to George DiCaprio for that. Greg Palast. Greg, thanks so much. Very well. Always great having you on. We'll be right back.